Welcome to Holistically Speaking. I'm Hilary Russo, certified holistic health coach and health and wellness journalist. This is an empowering place to explore self-awareness, self-love, and transformation through health, healing, and humor. By sharing life-changing experiences, knowledge, and guests with varied expertise, we'll explore who we are, how we got that way, and what it takes to be a happy and healthy grown-up. Mind, body, and spirit. I'm glad you're here. I wish I was a kid again, because skin knees are easier to fix than broken hearts. I posted that quote on social media some years ago, and it opened a floodgate of responses. You see, I was recently married, and then I wasn't. What the hell just happened? I thought my life was over, because divorce can feel like a death, an end of an era, a failure, a barrel of emotions that truly creates a toxic environment, if you allow it. But when we put our egos aside, and the drama, and think about it differently, it can pave the way for a new story to develop. American writer Jennifer Weiner said it best. Divorce isn't such a tragedy. A tragedy is staying in an unhappy marriage, teaching your children the wrong things about love. Nobody ever died of divorce. In Brian Kelsey's case, divorce was an opportunity to rebuild his life, literally. A chance to create a stronger foundation for himself and his boys. But it wasn't easy. It never is. And while we often hear about the stories of women in divorce, how it impacts us, I wanted to hold space for the husbands and the fathers of the world. How does one fix a broken heart and a broken home? What tools are truly needed to do it with love and kindness and determination and, of course, boundaries? Brian is just the guy to ask, as you're about to find out on this episode of Holistically Speaking. Brian Kelsey, he's in the house. What's up? I'm <laughs> kind of in the house. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm, in the, uh, I'm in the area. No one's in the house together anymore these days. Hopefully it's soon <laughs> we will uh, we'll all be together. I hope so, dude. It's been a long time since I've seen you and been in uh, the presence, in your presence, which is always fun and enjoyable. And we have a great time every time we're together. So we, we I'm just glad to have you here now on Holistically Speaking, because I love that you're going to share more about your story and um you know, and engage the listeners with who you are. So thanks. Oh, I'm happy to be here. So let's get into it, my friend. You know, Brian, you and I go back. We've known each other. Oh, gosh, we've probably known each other over a decade, I would say. Yeah. I think it was back in the 80s. I believe <laughs> right. we met in 82. No, I think we met oh, at Woodstock. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah we met over a decade ago, and it, it feels like even back then we were instant friends. And uh, we've we have similar paths too, in that we're both in this broadcasting world, both in the world of on camera. And I, I, there's so much more to you. And I know that during that time, when we were just getting to know each other as friends, you were actually going through a pretty significant process in your life and a, a life changing event and. Divorce is not an easy thing. I've been through it too, but rarely do we give space for the guy to tell the story. And mm-hmm. for me, I felt it, I have so many friends going through divorce uh, that, yeah. and we tend to focus on what the women are going through. And I wanted to hold space for you to share for your story, but also for the guys out there that might need to hear the man's voice of what it's like to go through this process. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's, obviously similar in that we're, um, we're all, we're in pain, no matter, even if it's an amicable divorce, if it's, um, uh, you know, of course, if it's a bad divorce, there, there's always pain, um, and getting through that pain. And even if, you know, it makes it more so like I, I, at the time I had two young kids, I mean, I still do, but they're not young anymore. Um, and, um, so that even elevates it even more when there are kids involved. So I was, I had two young kids and it was amicable. It was, it was, it was fine. There was no, you know, hard feelings or whatever. But, um, from, from, um, from a guy's side of things, the, um, I don't know how to say this, but sort of like the law or the, the, um, the, the, the husband generally is sort of 
every, everything's sort of geared a little bit more towards the woman, which I think it should be. Um, so the guys usually end up with, um, I don't know, it's a little, I think it's a little bit more of a struggle because usually, and this is just in my case, um, like I left, I moved out of the house and, and, um, she stayed there with the kids and I moved out. And I think that's the way it goes with, um, a lot of divorces, um, and especially with kids because you need to keep the kids central. But the problem is with a divorce and anyone who's gone through divorce knows this, that, um, it's a big financial hit. Um, there are so many things, luckily we didn't have a big sort of, you know, um, disagreement with the house or whatever. Um, but it's a big financial hit for, for both of us. So, um, I had to move out and, uh, with that whole financial hit, my credit was terrible. Everything was really bad. And I, (laughs) you know, it's so funny, Hillary. I was years before this happened. I was, um, I was in a, in a liquor store getting, um, getting some beer. And, um, there was a guy next to me and I, uh, I was just asking the guy at the, at the, at the desk. I'm like, Hey, do you deliver? Um, he said, yeah. And I told him where I lived. And the guy next to me said, Oh, I live there. I'm like, Oh, what's your name? And I didn't recognize him. And he's like, well, actually, uh, you know, I got divorced. And so, you know, uh, you know, my wife got the house, but I've got a great place above this bar in downtown, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he mentioned this bar in my town. That is just, it, it was the most depressing thing. And all I thought about it was like, wow, if I ever get divorced, if I ever, I don't want to be that guy living above a bar, uh, in a broken down to have my kids come there. Like it just broke mm-hmm. my heart. So I always remember that. So when I got divorced, um, I wanted to make sure that there was a place that the boys could go, even though I couldn't afford anything, uh, that it would be at least something that's not someone's basement or above a bar. <laughs> and so I couldn't figure out how to do it. And I finally thought of a way of, um, so I, I, I'm a licensed carpenter. I don't, I don't do it for a living, but um, um, I, I do it for friends and for myself. And so I thought, wait, what if I see if I can uh, trade renovation for rent? So I reached out to some realtors that I know, um, and I kind of proposed it. And one of them said, yeah, she's like, I've got this place. It needs a lot of work. It's on the market. Um, you're, ha- you're welcome to live there for, you know, for a couple months or however long you need. If you you know, want to do these different things. And I suggested, oh, I'll take up the carpet. I'll do this thing. Um, and the way I kind of did it was that, you know, they didn't have to pay for any materials. I, I paid for them. So what I did was I filmed everything and then, um, got the materials, uh, given to me for free because I would make this video and, and mention the, the sponsors and they would get, so everyone, so no one had to pay anything and everybody, everybody wins. And in the end, the boys, you know, they saw that I was in, you know, a house and wasn't, it was not far, it was, you know, in the same town. And, um, so it was, it was fairly, um, uh, not normal, but it wasn't, it it felt like a home because it was a nice house. And, um, I did that for a while. I did it for a couple other houses as well, which is, you know, it's a little weird going back and forth. But again, when you're going through the divorce as a dad, I, you know, you have to explain to your kids what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and always keep them informed. I don't know that I did that enough as a father and I kind of regret that, but things turn around and you get back up and, and it, it all kind of, it all kind of works out. It just, it, it bazes me because you got so innovative and you used a skill that you have that is kind of parlayed into part of how we even got into more work together because you were doing these renovations, you were filming them and taping them and putting them out there and doing the whole sponsor thing in a way where you're getting all the materials for free and created this, this, this on-camera expert, so to speak, doing the work that you do. And in the, in the meantime, it's giving you a place to live. It's providing a place for your boys. It's going to help the self-esteem. Obviously I would think that that really helped you to feel like I have purpose, you know, because does it not hit? I mean, I know just on, on the, the, the female side and just anyone going through a breakup, it's like a, it's a death in a way, right? We start doubting ourselves. What did I do wrong? And, you know, to be a provider and have children, that's an extra level, which I don't have kids, but I imagine that 
there's such a level of, am I doing the right thing? Oh my, my God. family. Exactly. How do you know if you're doing the right? How do you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. that's why like having a support system of family and friends is like, is so important mm -hmm. because like, who knows what, if we're doing anything right? You know, like you, you, you try to think you are, but you really need to, you really need to, you know, rely on your friends and family. Thank goodness I have, mm -hmm. you know, good friends and family. How old were you boys at the time? Um, let me see. That was 2013. So they were like nine and 12, I think. Yeah. And there's a lot of emotions going on at that age. I know, anyway. I know. And, and, uh, <laughs> you know, they're, it's, it's, it's all fine now. When I say fine, mm. like, you know, we, we try to talk about it and it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's very open, very fluid. They live, you know, my son drives now my older one. So it's very fluid. They're five minutes away. They come mm -hmm. back and forth whenever. And it's just a very, you know, um, which again, I don't know if that's right because a lot of people say when you get divorced, the kids need to have structured time here and structured time there. And, and their mother and I are just like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that works for us. I, I, mm -hmm. I think we'd rather have them f be able to feel like there's no schedule. It's like, you know what, if you want to, if you want to, you know, I'm going to go over to dad's tonight and, and sleep there and eat there. So that may be wrong and I probably, who, who knows, but, um, it seems to be working um, for us and for them more importantly. It, it's what works best for the family involved. You know, it also depends on the two parents involved. Are they both co-parenting still in a positive way? Mm -hmm. As we know, I think during divorce, and I see this a lot with my clients too, that are going through it, not only my own story and also I was a product of divorce as well, that there's that sense of like, the parents just are angry at each other. You know, somebody has got to be the bad guy in this area. I have taken, there have been times I've taken my kids to play dates when they were little. Mm -hmm. And um, the father, I remember this one specific time I, I dropped off, I was dropping off my youngest one and I was in the driveway waiting for him mm -hmm. to whatever. The father uh, was coming to drop off their, his, the, the play date. Uh, they were divorced and it was so bad that he was not allowed to, to um, pull in the driveway. So he had to park a block away couldn't come near in the in the, in the oh, i felt so bad the little boy had to walk a block to come home because he was not allowed his dad was not allowed to come in and I, again like these things you know you see these things and let's listen stuff happens like it just happens um mm -hmm. but um like that just that just broke my heart that was that was it, there's this, there's a feeling of needing to be separated. And sometimes from what I've noticed is that somebody has got to be the villain because it makes it easier to separate yourself from this relationship that you had, this union uh, that you need to, one party always seems to make the other party look like they're at fault. And I mean, obviously both parties are accountable for whatever's going on in divorce. You know, both parties are accountable. You know, maybe one is done something more that could be very <laughs> negative towards a, a, a yeah. relationship, but you're accountable for staying in something that might not be positive for you as well. Right. So we do see that and it's more difficult and unimaginable when there's children involved because your heart is just like, Oh, you know, um, how did you, how did you work through that? Like, how did you keep that positive place? Um, it's the kids. It's really, it's really them. Yeah. I mean, and, um, you know, I always wonder what, what it's like. And like for you, Hillary, like without kids, how do you keep that yeah. positive attitude? Because the one, your one rock, your one thing, which is, which was your, your ex-husband is, is now yeah. out of the picture. And so that to me must be much harder because there's nothing there for you to focus on except for yourself, which is number one. Um, but in my case, like it was the kids, like seeing those little boys, you know, it's just, it's just, uh, um, that is what, what, kept me positive and and they saw they saw what I was doing and as they got older they knew that I was really struggling and that I was doing you know I remember there's one time um man they wanted a uh they were dying for a trampoline like a trampoline is my favorite thing I've always had a trampoline it's like my favorite thing in the world <laughs> of course it's you did <laughs> it's such so a Brian fun. little you kid you. you must anyway so <laughs> Uh, all their friends are getting, uh, trampolines, these big whatevers. And I'm like, I don't have any money and I really want to. So what did I do, Hillary? I decided to make a video about trampolines. 
I was going to say, did you build I, I a trampoline? But I reached out to like 10 different trampoline companies that said, hey, yeah. I'm doing this video on trampolines. Would you would you mind? Would you uh, interested in, in you know, um, donating your product for the video? And I'll mention you and whatever. And sure enough, they bit like five of them. So I got this amazing, like the best trampoline you could ever have. The biggest, best trampoline ever. And uh, for the boys... And I and I made a video, and I, I can. It was it's now looking back at it, it's a terrible video, but um, uh, it's the way to to think around, think creatively, and and kind of kind of get things done. Um, and so we got the trampoline. It was great. I love that. <laughs> I love that. That is so great. You got a free. You got like five trampolines uh, in your backyard. <laughs> You're just jumping from one to the yes. other. <laughs> you got a trampoline. Come on. I have my my nieces used to have one like the big one that has yep. the sides and the cover yep. because like knowing me I need that extra protective moon <laughs> moon house thing or I'll go flying off into next Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> I have no Cirque du Soleil. Oh, so not, it's it's all you're all you're all pretty much protected in there. So yeah, it, uh, they are a lot of fun. So it, um, it, and it, I, I I love that you're so it's so creative that you well, did that. Again, it comes back to the answer to your question. It's the the boys that that kept me positive. Um, yeah. But from a, I want to know from you though, from a female point of view, how did you, yeah. how did you, when you got divorced, uh, life changes and mm -hmm. what, what, what kept you smiling? I mean, listen, we're all, we all put on a fake smile for a lot of the time. Yeah. So what kept you smiling? Look, I had to do a lot of inner work. It was not an, an overnight thing. And I'm still doing work. I'm work in progress. I've got a shirt that says it. And it's still an ongoing process because it hurts. It hurts to to let go of something that you thought was going to be long term. You know, you go into something thinking this is forever, you know. And for me, what I realized is that um, th this is not healthy for me. And when I, when I was finally able to see and let go of the ego, like, oh my gosh, what are people going to think? Oh, yeah. uh, you know, like you go there, you go to that place of like the inner bully and the negative self-talk. And when I started to realize this is not healthy for me and me being out as a second chance at life to start over. And also like you and I, it, similar, similarly, I went into my heart's work. I really realized I'm going to dive into yeah what I need to be better for me. And then that's where I started finding um, that I, I wanted to help people go through, help people on their healing journeys, you know, and help people in an area of mental health and uh, help people in their health and wellness. And then in that, I'm also helping myself grow. But there's been, there was a long time of just Hillary by herself. And I have I to say, having that. the support. I think you need that too, by the way. Oh, absolutely. Time to wallow yeah. in the, the pain, but as long mm -hmm. as you have a support system, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, it, I absolutely agree with that. I, you do need to have self time to yourself, time to understand what it's like to be on your own again. And uh, I'm not saying that you can't be in something with someone. I mean, you can't stop the possibility of someone coming into your life. It, there's no right or wrong, right? But as long as even if you have somebody in your life, you still create time for self because there's a lot of lessons and growth there that you haven't really given yourself time to really quite understand when you are so surrounded by your life being about everybody else, you know? So it was a lot of inner growth and um, thank goodness for family and friends and, and those who were around me supporting me. And I have to say the most amount of growth I've done was after my yeah, separation. Yeah, sure. Uh, Oh yeah, you you have to you really you really can spend that time uh, learning about yourself, and this is what I call the second half of my life, you know. And my gosh, I've read so many books, <laughs> <laughs> but also the the beauty of it is like even with this podcast, it's holding space for people to share their stories because we all have one. And I, I think it's it's realizing you're not alone in the battle. No, right? and it's everything you're thinking and feeling, you know, millions of other people are doing, are thinking and feeling the same thing, <gasps> like identical yeah. to what you're feeling. So don't ever feel alone. Right. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a divorce. Mm -hmm. It can be a breakup. It can be a loss of a family member. I mean, there are a lot of feelings we go through because divorce is a death. It is a death. It's the end of an era of something and someone that you are 
in a relationship with on a certain level. And, and there are the phases of grief that you go through that, that still exists with divorce. So be open to that possibility. I just, I do feel that men take on a lot of additional, uh, from being, you know, there's this mindset of being the provider, the mindset of, uh, you know, the, the kids tend to go with the mom. I mean, that's just the way yeah. the nature of things yep. are, right? But dads still need to be present and paternal and, and feel that there's this connection. So I feel for men going through that because sometimes they there is the short end. If they're a good dad, they have every right to deserve that time with their kids. Yeah, and if, and if you, you know? have a a good um, sort of whatever the this, this, this separate, whatever the... When I mean separation, I mean divorce, whatever the separation agreement is like having somebody who really, and I mean, like, you know, we had, we didn't go through a lawyer. Um, we, mm. we did mediation, yeah, which was the best because it was two yeah. people. It was, it was a lawyer, but it was also a family mm. therapist. So the two of them, um, helped us through that. Um, and the, the 99% of the conversations were about the kids, which is as it should be. Of course. If 1% was about the, you know, the house or whatever. Um, so it's really, you know, as, as angry as you might be at the other person, which, you know, I know a lot of people are, I wasn't angry. She wasn't angry, but I know there are, I mean, the stuff that goes on is just heartbreaking, but it happens. Mm -hmm. So if there mm -hmm. are kids involved, you just, well, even if there are not kids involved, you really, you have to separate yourself from that anger and, and step above it, <clears throat> excuse me, and kind of look at what's best, what's healthiest for you and for her, even though you might not like her or she might not like mm -hmm. you. <laughs> um, believe me, it, it gets better as the years go on. I mean, obviously there are, there are cases where it's just terrible, but I really um, think you have to, you have to step away from it. And it's I'm not saying it's easy. It's so hard. I mean, mm -hmm. so hard. Especially if it's been a, a, mm. a long, um, you know, a long relationship. I mean, ours was we divorced. Yeah. In, I think it was eight, eight years or ten years, eight years, um, which is a long time. Um, but still, you know, it's you, you got to step back and look at the big picture. Yeah, definitely. And you kind of are reinventing your life as well I'm, and renovating your life. <laughs> You're renovating and re reinventing. So, you know, let's let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, and that kind of comes into where you and I know each other. I mean, you you started doing these renovations already having the skill. And, uh, you know, we, you and I got into similar work together doing a lot of TV work. Uh, you've been on Martha Stewart, you've been on the Today Show. As that guy that is is the contractor, is the Mr. Fix It. We've done the SMTs, the satellite media tours. How did that all help you in the process? I mean, you're such a creative mind and I know you've got your like full-time job, which you get to work in, in the broadcasting area as well, but you're not, you're not a guy that just was a contractor. You have a background from working in radio and TV. So how did all that help you? Uh, immensely because I felt, um, you know, when you get divorced, you feel like a failure. Everybody feels like a failure because you feel like you just failed mm -hmm. a marriage. So every little thing is just amplified. Any small thing, any small thing that makes you feel better is amplified. Anything you do wrong is amplified in a bad way. Um, <laughs> you mentioned the Today Show, which was like, r I was on the Today Show right in the midst of just rock bottom, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a feeling, you know, like living in this house that I'm not paying for and I'm renovating. I mean, just rock bottom. But that segment, um, like I made that happen. I reached out to producers and, and found my way onto the Today Show. Um, that that helped me kind of cope because it was a little bit like, whoa, dad. It was, again, back to the kids. Like, oh, dad, you, you're on the Today Show? okay, you're pretty, you're, you know, it's pretty cool. Like that was a big, big, big sort of, uh, elevation thing for me. So that, that w when the kids start to see that again, it, you know, come, comes back to them and I was, and I still do I, a lot of voiceovers and mm -hmm. we'd be watching. Um, I mean, there was a time when, um, uh, my son, who's, who's a, who's a pitcher and a, and a baseball player, he was at his mom's house watching uh the Mets game and I was at my place 
you know, my little, <laughs> my place that I was renovating for rent. And he texted me. He's like, dad, I just heard your voice on a commercial during the Mets game. He's like, this is amazing. Meanwhile, it was like the worst little, like non important little voiceover, but you heard it. And that was like, uh, that was like, you know, solidifying that like, okay, dad's, you know, like we got it together. Dad's got it together. It's, it's, you know, he's, he's on the TV. I, I heard him during the Mets game. It's gotta be, you know, it's gotta be mm-hmm. something. So those little things, um, were, were, you know, just so important. It's interesting. We look to others for acknowledgement and appreciation. Oh, I and I, 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 even as parents, I would imagine you look to your kids for validation. That's the word. There's for, nothing validation. you want more. I know. Validation, right? But if right? you talk to anybody, uh, they'll say, you know what? You don't need validation. You need to believe in yourself and everything. And, it's, and, and mm-hmm. I agree, but it's hard. Sometimes you just need you need that, you know, your mom saying, and again, my mom, oh, Bri, you're so handsome. <laughs> you're so good. I love you. You're like, Does she sound like Mrs. <laughs> Doubtfire? <laughs> That's my worst impression. She's going to get so much. That's my She's going to be like, do not tell her about this podcast. <laughs> but you know, like you need, you need some of that just because you need, to, yeah. you need to get through whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever it is, um, as long as it's not harming you or harming anybody else, mm. whatever it is to get through, you, you need that. And usually it's other people you rely on to help you sort of push through those times. You know, you asked me before, you asked me what helped me get through it. And I think a lot of it is, is diving into my work and, um, you know, what are they, I hate using this expression and I don't mean it this way, but you know how they say like the best the best success is revenge or something like that, which I don't necessarily agree with that philosophy. But when you push yourself into doing well and you feel better about yourself and you, like you said, you're on the Today Show and then you're doing, you know, you're doing all these satellite media tours and you develop that show, the the Kelsey in the House, and, and now you have your new show and you're doing all this work and the voiceovers. Somehow, somehow it, it does have a tendency to just it gives you this feeling of, oh, wow, life has purpose again. You know, I, I'm thriving. It's giving me energy and fuel, you know, yeah, yeah. to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's true. Cause like you re you rediscover, and this is very common. And I know, I mean, I know more divorced people than I know not like it's, it's interesting yeah. and everybody, um, tends to, you get divorced, you go, there's different phases, like you said, but then there's the reinvention phase, which I, it's so exciting because then you're like, hmm. wow, I can do anything I want. I can do anything I, like, you know, especially now during this crazy time when we're locked up or home, we can like there, the world is your oyster and, and, and people reinvent themselves and you, you, mm-hmm. you sort of have this time of like finding what do I really, <laughs> this sounds so deep, but like, what do I really want out of life? What makes me happy? Mm-hmm. And so what I did was I got one of those, I just got a, um, a journal, like a book, and I drew out this chart um, of what I wanted in life, like, and, and, and just kind of free wrote and made graphs and all these different things. And it comes down to the number one thing is, is I, uh, I want to be happy. Okay. So I want to be happy. Um, and then that splits off into different things. Well, how do I become happy? And, and what's one side would be um, to take care of my boys like that. That makes me happy and it's important. And then another branch off of that is, um, financial, you know, making sure financially, and then everything sort of branches off into this long sort of branch and then into actionable items, which came down to like, you know, uh, at the very bottom one was, was exercise, getting exercise. Cause that like leads up to feeling better, to being better health, to being a better dad Mm -hmm. and being around longer and to take care of my kids, ultimately being happier. And this whole sort of like tree came out of it and it was so helpful and I still have it. It's this book I have next to me. And I always, if I'm down or if I'm having a bad day at work or a bad, whatever, I look at that and, um, it just, it's, it's inspiring. So you really, (laughs) you kind of come to, and whether it's divorce or it's health, you know, like, um, Mm -hmm. if you're going through a health issue again, like to me, health is number one, because you, you can't, you can't, uh, a lot of health issues you you can't really control. You may have something and you can't control mm-hmm. it. So um, it all it all sort of just sort of 
you know, kind of plays out into this how this whole sort of tree of uh, uh, like basically like if you're if you're into um, you know college basketball and you know the brackets, it's like picture like a big bracket, and the winner comes back to you. And uh, what do you want out of life, you personally? Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be healthy? And it's so helpful, so helpful. Yeah, you place bets on that one? <laughs> well, some of them I'm, I'm betting on. Health is one thing. I cannot, Hillary, I yeah. just can't. I love the couch. It's so comfortable. <laughs> and it's cold out. And I just I just can't. So This coming from the guy who works in the garage uh, doing this show. I mean, come on now. It's so, I've got to get, I, come on. I've got to, so my, as it's turning warmer um, in this part of the country, I'm going to get out and, and at least just, at least walk, just move. All right. You're declaring it. Yes. Oh boy. You're now I have it, to... right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is Aaron. <laughs> this, is, this is hitting the, the <laughs> podcast waves in a couple of weeks. Yeah. You better oh, get your God. butt outside, but you love baseball. And I mean, we've done some stuff where, uh, I, I feel like every time we've worked together off camera and, and with your other company that you work with, you, you're always like physical and moving around and stuff, but it's always, you always had a mic in your hand or a camera. Yeah. Right? Or something. Some the camera, there, I guess. There's a physicality to that. There is. But again, if I stay on a nice couch, ah, oh, yeah. I mean, come on a nice couch, you, can, a, you know, a hot cup of coffee or maybe a beer. I don't know. See, this is why you love late night television. <laughs> This is why yes. Brian Kelsey has a fatuation, yes. infatuation with late night TV, which moves us into another topic I want to hit on. Like you've got this new show that you're putting out there on YouTube, which I absolutely freaking love the 10 minutes with. And you are like, you recreated an entire late night talk show set in your Oh my God, Hillary, it's ridiculous. Why are we talking about this? This is insane. No, we're, we're going to talk about this because it's fabulous. <laughs> All right. I will give you the brief story because nobody needs to hear this, but I have a YouTube channel and it helps YouTube creators like, you know, up their game with their production yeah. value, whatever. So I decided to make an episode on how to like, make a YouTube studio, like a recording, you know, like to, you know, lights and stuff like that. And of course, you know, being a carpenter, I like, I like took it to the craziest level and kept going and going. And I made this, I'm like, I'm going to make it into a talk show set. Um, there's a, my favorite episode of Seinfeld is uh, when Kramer um, gets <laughs> the Merv Griffin set. The Merv Griffin yes. set. <laughs> it's literally my favorite So thing. great. He's like sitting there talking to nobody. Yeah, that was me. That was me. <laughs> I built so I built the set. And I'm like, I'm here talking to nobody. I'm like, well, you know, I should probably, you know, I'm, I'm in an area where there are a lot of celebrities. So I'm just outside yeah. of New York City. So a lot of celebrities and famous people live in this area. And in fact, I know some of them from like, you know, teach, you know, coaching baseball or, or different things. So I have this set, I lit it all and I'm there all alone, like a big loser just sitting there, you know? <laughs> and, and so I reached out to a friend of mine and she, uh, she's in, she, I coached her son and, um, really friend, friendly with her and her husband. And I, I just asked her, she's an actress and she was on, um, she was in, uh, uh, Devil Wars Prada mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Iron Man, all these different things. And she's on this a million little things, this ABC show. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Stephanie, I know this is crazy. Would you mind? Would you? Can I interview you for ten minutes in my garage? <laughs> and she said absolutely. And so I set it all up and did all the cameras, set it, you know, and 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 um, did it by myself. She came and she opened the garage door and and the whole thing, and and it was so much fun. I'm like, wow, this is great. So now I had this one person who was sort of famous, who I could you know you I could use to get other people. So mm -hmm. then I realized, wait a minute, there's another son that I coached in baseball. And I think her mom is a, um, uh, an anchor on CNN. And so I reached out to her and she's like, absolutely. And then she came on and I'm like, can we go through your, your Rolodex and like call some of your famous people? So we called Geraldo, Geraldo Rivera and I asked him for a mustache. That, that was great. So I kept going. And then, so now you're building this little thing. Um, and now it's like it's um I have a little bit of legitimacy. So now people who I don't know are coming on. Um and it's it's just ridiculous. Yeah. It's and what's crazy is like I I even watched the one you posted most recently, which which uh was with um with from NBC. Um uh, oh oh uh Craig Melvin? 
Yeah. Yes. And and I'm thinking like this guy is bundled up outside in the cold. I'm like, God. people want to be on your show. I don't people, know. It, well, what? I'm sorry. If somebody's sitting outside in a snowsuit and you can <laughs> see your breath, and they're still sitting in your driveway while, him, because you're COVID compliant, <laughs> please give yourself some credit. He had bourbon and a nice fire pit. So I had yeah. them all set up, but Craig Melvin, yeah, he was, he, he, he lived again, another one, he lives in this area and I don't yeah. know him personally, but I went directly to NBC. I just literally did the chain of events of how I try to get to people, um, and found, cause like, I couldn't, like, he probably lives probably five minutes from me, but I can't just get him. So I went through right. the proper channels of NBC and the PR department. And finally, after a year of back and forth, you know, like we'd be set to go, and then it was like, oh, uh, you know, Kobe Bryant. Died. This, I mean, this is how long ago. Kobe Bryant, he was in a plane crash. He can't do it now. He's going to California. Ugh. And then, uh, you know, something else. And then COVID hit. And then when COVID, you know, then then it was the election. Finally, um, it, it came to fruition. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, so it's, you know, because of COVID, we have to put people in the driveway. And I'm in my garage. I built a whole set. In fact, I built the desk to the exact dimensions of um, Conan O'Brien's desk, because I love his size of his mm -hmm. desk. So I, I found the guy who designed it. I got the dimensions. So I built my desk exactly like his. And um, uh, it's just kind of ridiculous that these dinglings, who's, who's, who am I? You're coming to my house and sitting in my driveway. It's so <laughs> it it ah. it floors me that people are just. It's not even like they're sitting on the set with you anymore. Oh my God. When I saw him in your driveway, <laughs> dressed like you know Ralphie from A Christmas Story, it was cold. It was, it was twenty like, degrees. It, it was so cold. There's breath coming out of his mouth. He's. It's first of all, it's you, Brian, because people you 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 are so engaging and comfortable to talk to. And I, I'm sure that's part of it. And your background, I mean, you used to work, didn't you work, um, was it Howard Stern? Is that who you worked with? I worked, I on the Howard Stern Howard show. Howard Stern for years and then yeah. uh, Martha Stewart for years. And so um, you've seen all this happen. Like you see how these conversations happen and then you're just who you are, but it does have that feel. <laughs> I hope so. I'm trying, you know, you just don't know. It's like, and you plus don't. I have to run everything. My Like there's nobody else yeah. there except for Pete, who's sort of a, my co-host and producer, um, but I have to set up all the cameras. I have to roll all the cameras. I have to make sure that all six cameras capture everything. And of course, you know, in this Craig Melvin one, the, the, the wide kind of looking over Craig's shoulder into the garage was out of focus, but I still used it. Cause it's like, who cares? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, you it, know, we get a little neurotic about that I mean, because it's our work, right? Come on, yeah. But how much of this is like really still therapeutic for you with it's your, so your life? Good. And that's why you have to, you know, when it, bringing it back around, when you get divorced or when you have a, a really bad time in your life, you know, again, mm -hmm. it could be work, it could be losing a job, it could be losing a loved one, um, whatever. Uh, you have to sort of turn to what makes you happy. And there's a few things that I know. There are three things that make me really happy. And that's what I've been focusing on. Number one is my kids. Number mm -hmm. two is doing this, you know, a late night talk show. Um, and number three is, is music. Like I'm a, I'm a musician. So like mm -hmm. playing music live is like those three things. And I, I sat down and I thought about those things. Those are the things that really make me happy. So how do I do those? And so the boys... It's easy. We're around this dingling TV show in the garage. Like that's that. <laughs> and, you know, I just formed another band and we're, you know, we're, we're going to start playing out when, you know, in, when it gets warmer, we can play outside during, you know, for, for COVID and stuff. And you have to find what generally makes you happy. And a lot of times that is hard. Mm -hmm. You might think like, I don't, I don't know what makes me happy. You know, making, makes me, uh, being married makes me happy. Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that person makes me happy, but like what, you know, like, so you really need to, you need to spend time on yourself. But the interesting thing there, and I hear that a lot, like so-and-so makes me happy. It's like nobody else makes you happy. No, you, that comes from within that's, and it's a beautiful thing when somebody can come in and be part of that and compliment your already happiness, because if we're looking to others to make us happy, we're never going to be happy. No. And that's the you know? biggest downfall when, um, and I have, I've had friends who, who say this, like, you know, I, you know, they're, they, they need somebody to make them feel happy. And mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh my God, don't date, don't do anything. 
You need to be happy mm -hmm. for yourself. That person is going to just augment that. They're going to just make it better. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, you cannot rely on somebody else to make you happy. Yeah. Maybe you can rely on somebody else to like make you laugh, you know, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever. But like, um, you know, like when you're in a plane and, uh, you know, you're, you're crashing. <laughs> You're going well, these are great story. <laughs> you're going down. Nobody's you're... making you happy when the plane's going down. I'm just saying. The plane's going down, back when we can fly in planes. And the oxygen mask comes out and they say, number one, get yourself oxygen so you can take care of uh, your, right. your people. So it's like that. Like you take care of yourself because you cannot take same thing with kids. Like you have to take care of yourself. You can't be a dingling nut and try to take care of yourself. You have to yeah. you have to make sure you're okay and then you can take care of your loved ones, your whoever. It's so important that we realize that. And there's just way too many people that are looking to the outside to, to get the happiness, to find the fullness, to find the completion. You, it, the importance of that completion yourself is so imperative. And then when other things come in and bring you joy, oh, it's even, psh, it's like it's mind blowing. The best. Exactly. It is the best. But not yeah. to say, I'm not saying it's not, it's easy because it's not because it's very easy to be like, oh, my God, I was just, you know, he uh, he left me or she left me and was and cheated on me and left me for mm -hmm. whoever. And uh, it's like it's awful. Like, it's yeah. really, really hard. Like it's Yeah, it is. And it's painful. And yeah. you start you go through a lot of different emotions, uh, no matter what the reason is. You know, it's just uh, we have to build ourselves back up. You know, mm -hmm. we have to renovate our own lives. That is right. right. <laughs> yeah. You like that? Ow. I like that. Nice. All right. So I want to play a little game with you real quick okay. while we were sitting here chit-chatting. And uh, I want to do a little word association with you, a little rapid mm -hmm. fire. So mm -hmm. I've been kind of collecting some words while we've been chit-chatting. And I'm going to throw them out at you and just come back with the first word that comes to mind. Okay. All right. Yep. So here we go. Okay. This will be easy. Ready. I know you're good at this. All right. Renovating. Um, happiness. Talk show. Um, happiness. <laughs> Music. Happiness. Okay. Uh, renovation. Family. Dad. Family. Divorce. Family. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, good. but there's very those those are very those are great hits, but they go to my core. Those things you said go to the core and family and being happy like those are core things <laughs> like if you had yeah. said like you know um you know coffee i'd be like oh you know uh you know, relaxing or a beer right. like oh delicious but you're gonna be like bourbon you, yeah right <laughs> but you go went to it. like the core things that go to my heart because i'm listening I, that's what oh, i do well, for I a living that. you're so good at it what about reinventing um wow oh reinventing um I guess progress. Um, you know, you've got to, you're always gotta you always you always have to make progress on yourself and your life. Mm. We could be uh, we could be hit by a bus tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I could drive a heart attack tomorrow. I don't know. Anything's possible. You could fall off the trampoline. I could fall off the trampoline. <laughs> I could I could get impaled by the microphone on the desk <laughs> in the talk show studio. Anything's possible. The garage door could shut on you yes. while you're walking outside. Exactly. To Anything check lighting. Possible. So you really have to put things into perspective. Yeah. So like final thoughts for holistically speaking listeners, what would you like them to walk away with and take from this conversation with you today? That it's going to be okay, no matter what you're going through. Um, uh, and that just don't take things for granted. You know what I mean? Family and friends, especially, especially family. And I know there's a lot of family, uh, people with that. they are broken families that they don't, they don't necessarily have that, mother they don't have that mm -hmm. father they don't have that sibling they don't have whatever but that whatever it is like just take time for yourself you have to take time for yourself as as painful as that is in being alone it is 100 percent um effective in healing yourself no matter what it is whether it's health whether it's work whether it's relationship take that time to focus on yourself it's so important yeah Perfect. Love it. Thanks for being here. Oh, such thank a, you so much for having me. 
Oh my gosh. I, this is, this is like 40, 40 minutes with. Oh my God. Exactly. <laughs> I'm oh. stealing the idea. I'm rolling with it. This new name of my show. Oh, Don't steal it. This is great. Thank, thank This is, this is a really good, these are good conversations to have. Yeah. And, and these I are hope, good. Con- yeah. And the more we have, the more conversations we have, the more we are on our way to healing and helping others on their journey as well. So, you know, uh, to our listeners, uh, Brian Kelsey, you know, check him out with the 10 minutes with and then of course check out his youtube you are still a star oh, in my classroom god. every semester please oh my god every you, uh, semester brian kelsey shows up in, in professor russo's class because they love you man oh please at least somebody <laughs> loves me come on no i appreciate that thank you thanks for being here thank you you can learn more about brian by visiting his website and youtube channel you can find those links on the podcast page And if you have a great story to tell on Holistically Speaking, or would like to learn more about how we can work together on your healing journey, just connect with me on my website at hillaryrusso.com. You can also reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Clubhouse at Hillary Russo. I'd love to hear from you. Holistically Speaking is produced by Alan Seals with music by Lit Bone Redding. We are all aligned, my friend, and it's why you're here. So thanks for listening. And consider subscribing to this podcast for more health, healing, and humor. I appreciate your support. And until next time, be kind to your mind and don't forget to laugh.